Hello everyone, welcome to our continuing series on different diversity issues and the prioritization that diversity must have in our profession. I'm Barry Melanson, President and CEO of the American Institute of C CPAs, and I am with Walter Smith, who is the CEO of NABA, the National Association of Black Accountants. Walter, thank you for joining me. It is my pleasure to be here with you today, Barry. It is such an important issue, one that obviously is a big agenda item globally, and in the business community in this country today. Uh, but diversity as it relates to our profession is one about a lot of different issues, but economics is a really big one, right? Because Correct. commerce is diverse, our profession has to be diverse. Some right. opening thoughts for you? Yeah, it continues if you think about the diversity and the inc inclusion component, component. It continues to be a major theme in the headlines and appears in the marquee of the economy, NABA in and of itself, having survived five decades of challenge in this space, has great examples of overcoming significant obstacles, significant challenges, and we continue to be a world-class provider of talent and the case for business in this particular economy and looking forward over the next few decades, so couldn't agree more. You mentioned five decades. Uh, the AICPA's efforts in this space uh, is about 50 years, and but NABA is, is celebrating a 50th anniversary as we speak. That's quite an accomplishment for any organization, so uh, tell us a little bit about that, and you said overcome a lot of the challenges from that standpoint, so uh, sure. give me some sense. If you think about and you consider uh, where we were back in the 60s and when we looked at some of the rates of uh, different folks becoming certified public accountants, ascending to various senior levels and executive levels in corporate America, and I think about the nine gentlemen that took the significant risk coming out of my hometown in New York City and laying their careers and in some cases their lives on the line. Uh, back then, and you look back at what we have become um, deploying uh, corporate leaders throughout industry and throughout corporate America, partners, uh, senior executives. If you look at our student membership, both uh, at the college level and at the high school level, and if you look at our, our, the case for our division of firms, the uh, small minority-owned businesses across the uh, United States, and if you look at the outreach that we've made with similar and dissimilar aff professional affinity organizations, we've come a great distance. It has been a wonderful but compelling and challenging journey, and it is not part of our final destination. We obviously have another 50 years of challenges and obstacles, but we've laid great groundwork. We have tremendous examples of success in this space and we're very proud of it with the partnerships that we've made along the way. Well there's there's some tremendous role models in our in our profession that, that come from the different uh, ethnic backgrounds and certainly the black perspective, the nine founders. We always talk about Frank Ross of course who uh, was uh, essentially the first uh, black partner in a big firm and, and really helped leverage that, but all of them were very critical to that part. I wonder, you, you mentioned your firm activities, and I know we do a lot of work collectively on some of the firm activities, and there are a collection of minority, predominant uh, owned minority firms, sure. uh, but, but it's also about diversity throughout all 44,000 firms. So what kind of advice would you offer from your perspective? I know you've been in this role a, a bit over a year now, but you've been involved in this space for a career. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of advice from a firm perspective to, tr to really try to move the needle in, in, in the diversity area, particularly the black area? Yeah, so I, it's been my experience, Barry, and true to, to form, I've been in this space for about a year and a month, but I come out of about three and a half to four decades of corporate corporate uh, experience and started out as an accountant and an auditor in what was then the Big Eight. And so having made a tremendous uh, journey helping drive the case for diversity and inclusion, what I have learned over time is that it's a business imperative. It is not a nice to have in, in so many different arenas and in so many different spaces. If you look at uh, making the business case, it adds talent it certainly focuses on the diversity in the different markets that many companies right. uh, do business. It is also a tremendous showcase for diverse leadership 
And diversity in, in this case is not necessarily limited to ethnicity or culture, but we have diversity in terms of generations in the workplace. If you look at the labor force, uh, NABA in and of itself resembles the workforce in so many ways where for the first time we have millennials all the way up through baby, baby boomers uh, occupying the same space and delivering and contributing uh, to its productivity. And so what you will find is that whether it's our high school level, our student chapter level, our young startup professionals, our very seasoned members or our lifetime members that are now staring down retirement for right. the first time right. in our history, you'll see that we have played extremely well in so many different sleeves across the economy. And we continue to double down and commit to the future uh, of performance and success in this space. You know, at the AICPA, we do a lot of work with futurists. And, and what futurists will tell you are there are certain major trends that you can influence or impact as it relates to a certain set of strategic initiatives you may be focused on. But there are some others that you cannot. And demographics, which you just went through a lot of different demographics, mm -hmm. demographics is one that will happen. It's the passage of time and the evolution of, you know, just what the human sector is about in a particular country or region or whatever. Right. It, it, they're essentially inevitable. And, you know, it's, 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 some people don't like it, but some futurists use the term, or dem demographers use the term, the browning of America. And it really comes to, it really comes to back to this issue. There are a lot of reasons to be focused on diversity and inclusion. Right. But if you just sort of narrowly take the profession and you look at the commerce aspect of the profession or firms, or if, as you were in the corporate side, mm -hmm. um, every, from a firm perspective, every mm -hmm. client you deal with is wrestling with diversity. Right. Ownership of capital is becoming more diverse. And, you know, it's in a very rudimentary and almost crude way to say if the profession is going to serve all of those interests, which is what we do, it has to reflect all of those interests. It's sort of right. really a simple equation, isn't it? Correct. No, I would, I would absolutely agree with that. I think we have, for a long time, had time-tested formulas in place that have traditionally been pulled off the shelf and deployed as a matter of convenience, as a matter of compliance, in some cases, and in a matter of comfort. I think what we're finding is that in order to remain significantly relevant and to remain at the cusp of being a leader, provider of services and goods, uh, that we will very much have to transform the economy and the companies that serve those markets to very much resemble not only the local and domestic markets, but the in true international and global marketplace. And so I think by having those opportunities to deploy talent in and across and making a significant investment and commitment to uh, capturing and growing and retaining and advancing uh, that talent in and across the board, I think we will see a much better solution. The world continues to change at such an incredibly uh, rapid pace that in many ways, uh, whether it's the futurists or some other segment, in many ways uh, we are up against the clock of, of extremely rapid change. And our profession is changing. Uh, we continue to commit to investing in um, the fintech space uh, as an example. So we see the rapid rise and advancement um, and deployment of technology in and across. And we are committing that development, that training uh, through all of our relationships, whether it's academia, whether it's our corporate partners, and then within NABA in and of itself, we're making a significant commitment to leadership there. So you talked about your multiple decades uh, of involvement, and we, we talk about, Walter and I both serve on our National Commission on Diversity, but we talk about having the difficult conversations, right? Yes. So give me an example of of that from uh, your standpoint. And I, and I will just preface it by saying one of the rules that we have at the Diversity Commission is that we always start of each meeting and we say we suspend our right to be offended because right. to really have well-meaning conversations that try to progress things, you, 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 you can't let some of the 
I'll say the 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 divide and the rhetoric that occurs in the in the in the media and social right. media and the market. You have to be able to have those really constructive conversations. Can you right. can you give us some thoughts on that? So I, it's a great question, Barry. I always have some fun with the concept of bringing your authentic self uh, to your workplace, to whatever your academic or corporate opportunity is. We certainly have our share around the commission table. I think the candor has added another level and dimension to driving towards solutions. And what I mean by that is if you look at the diversity and mixture of leadership, from all the different corners of academia and corporate uh, America, government, uh, other affinity organizations, I think that we've had the ability to tap into some very sincere and some very tough conversations, right, right. some truths that we spent some time on because I think that the sharing of those perspectives has added an element in a, of education and another way, uh, a different way of looking at some common challenges and perhaps offering some solutions that previously may not have been considered. So I think that candor and the different perspectives have added a, a real sweet spot for us to make progress sometimes in leaps and sometimes in small, much smaller steps. But I think the commitment is there. I have felt it since joining the commission a little over a year ago. And that brings great promise to uh, a common to common areas of challenge for all of us. So I want to close with one tough question. With that sort of in mind, um, obviously, when you talk about diversity, you will get some pushback from people, and it's inevitable. People have different perspectives and different opinions, which is fair. Um, but you know, one of the things that people often say, and we talked about Nava's 50th anniversary, is have we reached a time in which um, you know, a, a single ethnic background organization isn't as effective as it could be. Maybe we ought to think about it. Doesn't that create some isolationism? And I know you've thought a lot about it and we've talked a lot about it, but I just think that in heading, hitting that head on, I'd, I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on that. Yeah, so one perspective could be that it creates some degree of isolation on either side right. of the equation, the inclusiveness, the exclusiveness. I think that the business imperative has created a tremendous opportunity for us. I, the biggest challenge for me has been sort of the repeated question around diversity and inclusion. Why NABA? Why NABA after 50 years? Why NABA after 40 years? I chaired NABA for our 40th anniversary just a decade ago. And I've always been of the mindset that 40, 50, 60, 70, pick a number is, again, not the destination, it's part of the journey. If you look at the number of college students that are now coming out, coming through NABA, coming off campus, whether it's through our HBCU relationships, whether it's through, through our PWI relationships, whether it's our student chapters or our regional student chapters, or whether it's our accounting careers awareness program, at the high school level, the business case for diversity and inclusion remains largely intact. And so I, I find myself not only engaging in conversations, but why diversity inclusion now after five decades, but what will those challenges be and look like and have we truly arrived now that we are at year 50 and the answer is no, we're, we're not done, we're not close to being done and successful in this case. What I have found uh, through the work of the commission, and I celebrate actually part of my work in the commission. I was a scholarship student four decades ago. I was the recipient of an AICPA scholarship That's that great. helped further and advance uh, my academic career. Somebody made a great decision for you decades I, ago. <laughs> wise investment in every conceivable way, Barry. But I think it definitely um, creates more uh, opportunity to engage in the business case for diversity and inclusion around talent, around branding, around recognizing the diverse uh, community as future clients and future consumers of the different companies that we have representation in and across. 
And I think it's a perfect vortex of, of opportunity why diversity and inclusion still matters very much. Right. Well, Walter, I, I thank you for your time um, today and to, for this very enlightening discussion. I, I'll just close with one thought as it relates to particularly firms, but I think it also applies to corporate finance functions. People often ask me, okay, I believe in diversity. How do I achieve it? Where do I, where do I find the candidates? Mm -hmm. And uh, I always start with a pretty simple answer. You really have to recruit where those candidates are mostly located. And so you mentioned historically black colleges and universities. There are many other uh, campuses where, based on the demographics of the community that they serve, et cetera, that will have um, a, a higher proportion of, of minority candidates, whether right. they're they black or uh, Hispanic or Asian or whatever. And I think that uh, you really have to make that, so that's the first step, really, Correct. if you're trying to, to look at your sort of employment base, is to recruit where those candidates really are. Um, and that might not be in your own backyard. Right. No, you're, you are spot on. One of the greater achievements, Barry, if you look back over our 50 years, so we start out with nine in New York City. We're now operating in 50 different markets with our professional chapters, and we have about 150 student chapters and regional at-large chapters uh, throughout our organization. There are a great number of opportunities right. to engage our students uh, across that landscape. At, typically in the late summer, early fall, NABA is executing its four regional student conferences. Uh, we just completed our southern, our region, uh, I'm sorry, our southern, our eastern and central region student conferences. We've had well over 2,000 yep. uh, students in attendance there, and we're wrapping up for our western region in Dallas in the next couple of weeks, so we're very excited about that. So those opportunities exist through our regional student conference model. The corporate partnerships that we've had in place that are either brand new or that have existed for a good number of years, we're both successful in terms of driving ROI uh, in talent in the firms. Our next big focus will obviously be on retention and advancement and promotion. It is a very expensive uh, investment to add new talent and to lose them far too early. Okay. And so I think that's going to be the next great opportunity in the DNI space as we drive value um, in and across all of our different partnerships. Walter, thank you again for joining us uh, today, and congratulations on NABA's 50th anniversary, and we look forward to working with you going forward. Thank you, and congratulations to the AICPA on celebrating your 50th year in the DNI space right. as well. That's right. Fantastic. Thank you, Walter. Thank you.